going to look at how to set view up for a depth of field type render. Uh, depth of field basically means the foreground and the background are blurred where our uh, the subject matter, the focal point, is in crisp clean focus. So let's have a look at the scene very quickly to see uh, how I've set this up. I've simply made uh, two uh, examples of the plant in the foreground and in the background I'm utilizing a plane with a ecosystem of the same plants just so that I get a nice fill in the background to make it look like there's lots going on and then of course we have our butterfly because we're going to do depth of field which is a photographic technique obviously we need to be looking at some settings in the camera initially we have two, we have blur and we have focus. By default, view will give you a focal point 100 meters away from the camera. Now that's 100 meters in any direction, i.e. it's the radius of a sphere that the camera is in the center of. Obviously, our butterfly is not 100 meters away. You can see how far I've had to zoom out to be able to see that um, square which represents the focal point. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move that so that our butterfly is the focal point of the render. I can click on that square and move it manually. So I can move it up, I can move it down, etc, etc. However, we've spent a long time, theoretically, constructing our scene so that we know exactly what we want to be seeing in the render doing it manually we're not going to get exactly that same uh, viewpoint so an easy uh, way would be for the uh, software to do it for us i.e to find that focal point and we can do that by looking at this button here which you've probably never used before which is the um, switch to target button so if we click on this uh, initially nothing happens obviously the focal point is now uh, highlighted uh, which suggests something's about to happen so we're going to pick from our drop down list all of the items in the in the scene we can see that we've got the butterfly so if we click the butterfly you'll see that the focal point is immediately jumped away from that 100 meter point to the the butterfly itself okay so that being done we can go back to the camera and we can think about uh, how much blur we want to put into this render you can see it works in percentages but we can go above a hundred percent but we'll start it we'll start at 50 just to give us an idea of what's going on let me just hide this layer so it makes it even clearer you can see we've acquired two windows, two rectangles, you know, define them as you wish. What that's telling us, anything that appears in between those two planes is in focus. So if we put our plants back on, you can see that there is the line of focus within the plants. So we're getting quite a lot of the plants still in focus, which is not a bad thing, so that we can see the species of the, of the plant alongside the butterfly. Let's change this to 100% and see what we get. You can see now that the planes have moved closer together. That means that the area of sharp focus between those two planes is, is getting smaller and smaller. And as I say, we can go over 100%. There's 150. And we can go to 200. This is entirely down to your scene and, and what you want to be rendering. Let's just move it back to 100 for now. And do a render. Let's just have a look, quick look at our render settings. I have it on final at the moment. But what I want you to pay attention to is over here grayed out and inaccessible um, you'll see the button which activates depth of field now that has switched on automatically because of the settings that I changed within the camera yeah so as soon as we start changing the focal length and the blur 
by default view will say oh they want they're going to do a depth of field render i'll activate that automatically because that should be unticked um, as a matter of course uh, so that means okay fine i can do a final quality depth of field render so we'll do that right this very second um and there'll be a couple of problems which we can look at and, and talk about how we're going to solve it once the render is completed so there's the render going through you can see it's still crisp and clean but with a pass over it applies the blur now let's have a look at this this is this is less than attractive shall we say it's messy it's noisy it's not the effect we we're anticipating that would seem to suggest to me that somewhere up here are some quality settings that I can tweak. Now, at the moment, anything to do with depth of field for editing is greyed out and inaccessible. That means we have to come down to our user settings. And you can see immediately this is back to where we expect it to be. It's unticked depth of field because it's giving you the opportunity to um, to tweak and change where necessary. So I'm going to tick it again, and you'll see that the edit button has lit up, and that means we can look at our options. We have three ways of rendering out this um, depth of field effect. There's the distributed ray tracing. Now that is the proper full computation of depth of field and will take quite some time. The other two options, hybrid 2.5 and fast hybrid 2.5, um, make use of the uh, generated Z depth image and uh, combined with the ray tracing to produce a hybrid image, which is produced much, much, much more quickly. I don't mind the hybrid 2.5. I think it gives quite a nice effect. But the one thing we must do is tweak the number of passes. That's uh, how many times view scans and, and recomputes and refines the image. Um, 8 to 10 is usually adequate, to be honest. So if I just leave it at uh, hybrid 2.5 with uh, 10 passes, let's see what we get. And let's render again let's leave it in the user settings so that we're in control of our quality and click render so now the renders complete and we can do a quick comparison between the uh, the two renders the um, final quality and the user settings so this is the final quality as we can see with the the nasty edges on the the leaves in the foreground and then, of course, the fast hybrid with 10 passes. Uh, it does take a little bit longer, but you can appreciate the quality difference between the two different renders. So let's just have a quick recap. We're going to use depth of field. The most important thing is finding our focal point, at which point the, the focus should be nice and sharp. It means we have to look in the camera settings, and we're going to look at the focus. And we're also going to press the uh, the button, which takes us to where we can choose what we're going to focus on. We go back and we decide on our amount of blur. Let's just change it to 50, just so that we can see <clears throat> the two planes which are set up. Remember, the two planes represent the area in between, which is in focus. Anything outside those two planes is blurred so foreground blur here background blur back there render settings we need to be really try using the user settings making sure depth of field is ticked and making sure that we're setting up the correct type of uh, blur rendering options hybrid and fast hybrid probably uh, are the way to go um, and again, remember the number of passes, the better the quality of the, um, the blur. You know, it becomes less noisy, less pixelated. I hope you found that useful. Please don't hesitate to get back to us if you've got any suggestions on other topics you'd like to be covered or if there's anything within this that you don't quite understand. 
Um, look forward to seeing you again. Uh, thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank <music> you.